and welcome back. Yeah, right, struts and wings and stuff. Right, I put on the fuselage um, struts for the wings and they went on pretty well actually. Um, they've got some decent anchor points um, for them and really they do put it at, the, at a good angle for you to obviously put the top wing on. Uh, and basically what you need to do is just dry fit like I am um, right there, the actual main wing struts as well. The anchor points or the holes for them are pretty deep um, for what they are and they do sort of like settle in really well. All you gotta do is before you commit to glue is to make sure that A, they fit and B, once you've put the glue in and you have a quick check just to make sure that they are completely upright uh, and straight. Um, but again, dry fit twice, glue once um, is my prescription for that one. Um, there isn't any issues with it, you just plop them in, make sure you got them in the, the right order and you shouldn't have any issues whatsoever. Um, mine went in pretty well, just make sure if there's any seam lines around um, the ends of the struts you get rid of those because they might just sort of like make your life a bit difficult when you're actually putting it in, it won't fit exactly in. But that's just normal basic stuff, clean it up and away you go. Now what I've elected to do is just basically show you how I started off putting the top wing on because it is a bit of an arse ache actually putting this on and getting the right camera angle so you can see it. What I am going to tell you is now is careful with the top wing, place it where you need it to be placed, okay, with the two front ones at the moment, what I'm gluing right now, okay. Once you've got them in and they're settled and they're dry, then put the other ones in. Um, again, there's no issues with the kit. It's just with me, with biplanes and stuff, it's just, I just find it easier doing it that way. One bit at a time. And once everything's dry, you should be okay. Everything's sort of all settled. The only thing I will should say as well is just watch your fuselage struts as well on your anchor points on the top wing. Once you've done that, again, just make sure it's all nice and dry and you're not fiddling around with it and it should be all right. And there you go. After about a good hour or so, they're all done, they're all sort of like anchored in. Not a problem whatsoever. So on with the actual rigging. Now with the rigging, again, I'm only gonna be showing you sort of like very, very small bits and pieces of it um, because it did take me quite a while. Now with the rigging, I'm gonna start off with the tail. Now, what I've used is, is a medium black 132nd scale aero black rigging from Infini, or Infini model. Um, that was directed to me by um, Rob, Rob Bedford. Hello, Rob. Um, and basically, that's what I've used for the whole, the whole kit. So, how I do it is thus. All I do is put a very, very minute scopic um, blob of super glue actually on the kit or where the actual point is going to be. Lay the actual piece of rigging over that um, bit of super glue and I'll just hold my hands there very steady, very still until the actual rigging gets hold of the glue and then onto the kit. Push down slightly so the actual rigging is on the kit and not just in the actual um, super glue. And once it's sort of like dry-ish, or it's caught so it's not going to go anywhere and then you can release and just let the actual glue properly set which doesn't take long okay and then you can proceed with the other bits and pieces it's time consuming yes but you do get a decent result again if you can do other types of um, rigging or uh, ways of doing rigging then you just go for it Again, all I'm going to be doing now is just attaching the actual rigging points to uh, the fin. And again, it's the same principle. Bit of a blob of glue, making sure that the points where I need to have it are sort of like dust free or crap free as it were. And just to basically make sure that as per the instructions, they are within the right place. 
Of course, what you can do is you can use buckles and you can drill holes and all that type of stuff. I personally, I just take the, well, what I think is the easy way out. However, I might go down the old drilling the hole um, routine next time I do a biplane, um, which I might do the Booker or the Tiger Moth for my CM. Anyway, that's another video. So, again, you just pop in a bob of glue onto it and just leaving it to actually set. I know it's quite difficult to actually see, but that's gone on quite nicely. Point to note as well, when I'm doing the rigging, I don't pull the actual rigging really nice and taut. I just pull it so it is just catching, as in it's nice and straight, um, so you don't get any sag whatsoever. You pull it too tight and then you glue it, you just put in pressure or pulling pressure as it were on each side of the rigging and you're more likely for it just to pop off when the super glue actually does fail which it can do quite quickly so don't pull it just pull it taut just as it is and then just pop it on and just glue it in it's as easy as that again the other main reason why i haven't shown you all of the rigging as i do is because of the camera angles and basically it did take an awful long time but what you're seeing now is what i've done at the entire kit no deviations whatsoever so rest assured whatever i've done i've done no magic tricks i've not done it another way it is purely from what you can see again just making sure that the actual rigging has caught the glue and we're all happy Again, when you do start this, you do tend to get very cautious. But once you get your, your niche, you can basically do this a lot quicker. It's just making sure that you know what your super glue is going to be doing or what you can do and what it can't, as in doing it too quickly and it not working. So that's the first part of the tail done. Once that's done, you've got a couple of rigging points um, at the bottom or underneath. Again, all you do is pop it on and that's just me taking the excess off. Again, you're just making sure you're doing it as precise as you possibly can and making sure you don't actually cut the rigging which you've already done. So there you can see that's the, the tail section complete, the upper and the lower. So, F by magic, that is all the rigging done. And as I said, it's done in exactly the same way. Um, the only thing I've got left to do now, which I'm going to quickly show you, is basically the antenna um, for the radio, which is obviously going to go above the actual cockpit itself. The kit itself does not give you a strut or whatever it is, radio mast that goes on the top wing. So all I've done is made that out of plastic card. Just simple enough, just cut off a bit to size and just glue it on with super glue. So again, what I've done is I've just placed a bit of super glue on top of the strut on the tail. And again, not pulling it too tight, just placing it over and pop it on. Uh, Steve Sutcliffe actually gave me a good idea for this one is to pop your super glue on your attachment point, uh, spray some, um, what was it, super glue activator on the rigging. So when you actually put the rigging onto the super glue, it attaches and glues almost instantaneously. The only thing you gotta watch for is, you put the rigging in the right place at the right time the first time. But again, once you got used to it, it really shouldn't be a problem. So here we go, back again, just using the actual blade itself and very, very carefully look through and making sure that you're cutting in the right place. Nine times out of 10, I get the right place. One times out of 10, sod's law, I actually cut the wrong bit and the whole thing goes. So that's the top part done. Now, all I'm gonna be doing now is attaching a um, a vertical um, line 
Now for this, again, you're not pulling it too taut because the actual top line, as it were, is angled slightly downwards where this attachment is. So again, you don't want to be pulling it right the way up to the top, then then sticking it on with super glue, because what it'll do, it'll just pull it straight down and you won't get like a decent angle. Again, rocket glue is the one I'm using for this particular task. So with a cocktail stick, making sure the end is clean, just bob it on. And the tiny, tiny little part there, you're just gluing it on, onto the actual rigging itself. And then when not a lot of actually pulling pressure, you just take the end. Again, it is slightly angled rearwards. And you're just popping it on and just keeping it there until the actual glue attaches itself to the other piece of the rigging. And again, only a few seconds you need to wait. And once you can fill the actual glue in, taking the actual rigging itself, you can just release the pressure and you can let go. And my advice is to just leave it, making sure the glue properly sets and then you can do some trimming so there you go that's all i've done and that ladies and gents is the rigging complete Yay. right then easy enough now we're going for the wheels uh two-part affair you just stick them together and you've got one attachment at the rear or the other side of it as it were that attaches to the actual main legs themselves. And all I do here for this is to attach a small bit of blue tack on one side of the wheel, run the glue down around the actual attachment point um, of that section. And then when you put the other one on, you're not gonna get glue all over your fingers, thus not getting all over the kit part. So you're just popping it on, so you're not touching any, you can just pop it on, push, and that's it. So depending on the amount of glue that you put on, it can seep through, thus getting it on your fingers and again over your part. So that's why I use that um, bit of blue tack. So you can pop it off and you can go on to the next one. Uh, the rear wheel is a one part affair and all you need is to take the seam off. So getting the, the last bits and pieces off now, which is basically the engine, um, putting the cowling on or seeing which one you're gonna do. You've got obviously four variants. Uh, mine's gonna have the actual cowlings closed. So I'm not gonna do anything major, major with the actual engine, as in detailing it up. Uh, and basically the exhaust stacks as well. I can get those off, get it all cleaned up uh, along with the actual propeller blades, the hub, and everything else to do with uh, the final part of the build and paint. So with that, you've got all your bits and pieces. And all I'm gonna do now is just put together the engine, or as far as I can, with the actual engine itself, before we actually do start in the actual painting itself. So again, all I'm doing there is making sure that I've got the, the pin, which will go through the actual propeller in order for it to actually go around. So we don't wanna be gluing that part actually inside the actual hub itself. So again, very carefully just popping the glue just around the edges. Just wait for the glue to work its way around. And just to make sure you haven't got any glue where you don't want it, you can grab the actual stem or the stick and just make sure it can go around. Now we can start putting the actual cylinders together. And once you put these together, um, there are attachment points that go uh, into their corresponding bits and just making sure that you do actually get it. Take your time doing this. 
Okay, hence why I'll probably turn this off and go back on again to make sure I've got the right place. So yeah, just take your time on that one. Uh, come on, Lenny, you can figure it out, mate. Come on. That's it. Keep going. No, not that bit. Go on. No, no, try again. Get your crayons out, Lenny. Right, there you go. We've got it. Right, so all you need to do now is just bob on the glue. And all I did was just pop it on the tops of the cylinders. And again, you just watch your actual glue go around. Making sure that it's got a nice sort of like attachment to it. So it's not going to come apart. Well, then again, if you're using Tamiya Extra Thin, you really shouldn't have any problems. Again, just making sure that you get all your bits and pieces all glued together. And once it is all glued in, it is a nice fit with no issues at all. So there you go. Nice one, Lenny. You can put your actual crowns away now. So, with that done, you can just put on the part there, which I believe is some piping or whatever it is, uh, on the Mercury engine. And it is a simple affair. You just, two attachment points. Even you can do it any first time. Yeah, well done. Well done, mate. That's it. Keep going. Um, you can just glue it on from there. And again, there's no issues. It's a really nice fit. It does attach to the actual cylinders as well. And again, if you're having it open, this is the part where you are going to be actual, well, will be able to actually see it. So if you're having a cowling to open, good thing about it is just be a little bit tidier with uh, your application of glue and you'll be all right. You'll be absolutely fine. So there you go. So the other part now is just, you got some struts to actually put on to the front uh, of the engine. Um, these are three in total. And what, well, the only thing I will say is, is when you're taking them off the sprues, just be a little bit careful because they are quite thin. Uh, but once they're all cleaned up, you can attach them together. And um, just with a little bit of fiddling around just to make sure they're straight they do go on really well and attach together and the last bit really or the major bit i'm going to show you is the front part um, of the cowling which is going to be like a bronzy brown color and also you got the piping as well there for the engine which will attach to the actual cylinders again it's a really really nice fit and where you get the attachment on the sprue on the front part, um, it's done in a way that when you clean the sprue gates off, okay, it's not going to leave you with like dints and divots. So, because it's going to get painted bronze, it's not going to show up like a diamond on a bear's ass, okay. So, well done for that on uh, ICM's part. Again, it's minimal cleanup anyway. And all you do is just pop it in and glue it down. The attachment point is solid for it. Again, just push it down just to make sure you've got a nice attachment and you've got these parts here, which is pretty self-explanatory. You just pop them in and glue them. So with the actual wheels then, just to I think I'm just gonna finish off with this, is basically I've painted them um, tire black and all I'm doing now is just use a simple stencil just to mask the hubs of the actual wheels. And again, all you gotta do is work your way down, making sure that you've got the right size, not too big, not too small, and it is actually in the middle, okay, or completely central. Then once you've done that, all you do is get uh, your airbrush, and this one's gonna be sky gray, which matches the side and the underneath the fuselage. Again, it's just a very light coat in random areas just to give that sort of like, not weather, well, yeah, sort of a weathered look, but not a solid base, as it were. 
because you want it to conform with what you've done with the rest of the kit. Okay, you can go back and weather it once you've all sorted. And that's it, all you do is pop it off, have a quick look, making sure you've got all the, all the bits that you need, and you're laughing. So again, just with the other wheel, and it's the same principle again with the, the rear one as well. Obviously it's gonna be a lot smaller. Then all you do is just pop it in, and again, you've got the right area. And just make sure, take your time as well. When you're popping the, the actual wheel in, just take your time. And if you do go over it, don't worry about it too much. Um, you can cut back in um, with some tire black or rubber black as it were, um, that I use for this one. Uh, Tamiya's, I think it's F XF86, is it? Um, I'm pretty sure it is, it's the rubber black one. And you can just cut back in, and if need be, you can just brush paint it with a bit of um, the old Tamiya, what's it called? Hey, let me get it. Uh, paint Retarder, and you'll be able to paint it on by brush. So there you go. There's the tyres and the wheels, as it were, all sorted. And again, same principle with the rear one. Just find the right aperture and away you go. Awesome. So just to finish off then, just attaching the wheels. All I did was I just put a, a bit of a blob of super glue on the end of um, the wheel strut, as it were. Yeah, the wheel strut, we'll call it that. Just making sure you put a, a decent enough amount of glue on it, but not too much. And all you do is just follow the instructions to make sure, because it is slightly angled, uh, the actual attachment point onto the actual strut itself. Again, just making sure that the glue just attaches itself to the part. And you can take your hand away. And just to make sure that it is all nice and uh, all nice and straight. So making sure you've just got everything straight. And it obviously coincides with the other wheel. And it's not bent or on the piss as it were. Then all we do is just grab what we've got there. Is, which is a uh, super glue um, actuator or activator. Whatever you want to call it. Spray it on there and it will dry it almost instantaneously. So happy with that. And we can go on to the rear wheel. So there you go. That's all the wheels all sorted out. Everything is straight. The rigging is still there. And all I'll do now is just to finish off all the sort of like the minor bits. Paint the lights and a bit of the weathering on the wheels and the struts. And then we can concentrate on the right, engine. So we'll close it on for that video. Um, oh, I'll just let you know, all that heavy breathing and panting, that wasn't me, that was Molly. Just come back from a walk. Anyway, um, so yeah, we'll leave it there. And basically just to show you, that is where we are at at the moment. And what we'll do is, um, hopefully later on today, we'll be able to crack on um, and get some of the engine done. And what I'm gonna have to do as well is wait on for some paint, as in um, for the bronzy brown at the front of the cowling. And also, um, same as what Steve Sutcliffe has done, because he's more sweats on than I am, he, he got some resin replacement um, machine guns. I'm doing the same because the kick ones are a little bit flimsy and very breakable. So that's what I've done. So I've just got to wait for them to come in and they should be in in the next um, couple of days. So yeah, anyway, what we'll do is next video, we'll be concentrating on the engine, um, painting it, putting it together, and then hopefully um, we can stick the final reveal on that particular video. Okay, so until then, happy modeling, keep yourself safe. Um, this chair is making me sound like I'm trumping, and I'm not. That wasn't me, that was a chair. Anyway, happy modeling, keep yourself safe, 
and I'll see you on the next video. So until then, ta-da.